Example two, constructing a confidence interval for a population variance and standard deviation. The problem states that table four shows the sale price of 12 randomly selected six-year-old Chevy Corvettes. We want to construct a 90% confidence interval for the population variance and standard deviation of the price of a six-year-old Chevy Corvette. So to your left, you can see the prices. So the approach. In step number one, we have to verify the data are obtained randomly and the sample size is small relative to the population size. So because the sample size is small, then you draw a normal probability plot to verify the data come from a population that is normally distributed and a box plot to verify that there are no outliers. Um, we're going to first do the by hand approach and then we'll go ahead and talk about the technology approach. By hand, step two, we're going to compute the value of the sample variance. Number three, we're going to determine the critical values, the critical value on the left and the critical value on the right with n minus one degrees of freedom. And then we're going to use the formula to determine the lower and upper bounds of the confidence interval for the population variance. Step number five, we're going to compute the square root of the lower bound and upper bound to obtain the confidence interval for the population standard deviation. So in step number one, a normal probability plot and box plot indicate that the price of the Corvettes could be normally distributed and no outliers are present. And we can verify this on StatCrunch. So on StatCrunch, what I've done is I've come up here and I put in the data into the column. I put in the entire data of the 12 prices of the Corvettes. And so if I want to check to make sure that the normal probability plot and the box plot indicate that it's normally distributed, the first thing is we can go to graph and then down here where it says QQ plot. Okay, and then we can select the column, select compute. And then we can see here that it's creating a line that represents pretty close to a normal distribution. In addition to that, we can then come back and then put in the box plot. We can draw our boxes, boxes horizontally. And we can see that it's approximately normally distributed here as well. So that verifies step number one. And so step number two, we need to determine what is the standard deviation and the variance. We can find the standard deviation, which is S, and S squared represents the variance. So let's take a look at that. We can come in here, okay, we can go ahead and go to our stat, go to summary stats, go to our columns, okay, and we want our standard deviation. So we get the number 2,615.19 for our standard deviation. Okay, so now that we have our standard deviation, now we can move on to step three. Because we want a 90% confidence interval, what we need to do is determine alpha first. Alpha is taken one minus the 90%, which is 0.90, which gives us 0.10. And then we're going to take alpha and divide it by 2. So 0 0.10 divided by 2 gives us 0 0.05. So the chi-square critical value on the left is 1 minus the alpha divided by 2, which becomes chi-square of the area of 0 0.95. And then step number 4, the chi-square on the right is chi-square 0 0.05. And then the degrees of freedom is n minus 1, since we have 12 prices for the Corvettes, 12 minus 1 equals 11. Now what we're going to do is we're going to then come to the chart and then determine what our critical values are. So here we're looking at the degrees of freedom, which is 11. We got 0 0.95, which gives us 4.575. So the chi-square critical value on the left is 4.575. And then degrees of freedom 11 with an area of 0 0.05 gives us 19.675. So the chi-square critical value on the right is 19.65. Now in step number four, you're going to use the formulas. So we have our lower bound, we have our upper bound. Now this formula represents the variance first. So we're going to plug in our numbers. N minus 1 is 11. 
times the standard deviation squared over the chi-square critical value on the right. And then over here, we have 11 times, times the standard deviation squared over chi-square value on the left, 4.575. We plug in those numbers and we get the following values. So this represents the confidence interval for the variance. Now in step number five, we want to be able to find the confidence interval for the standard deviation. In order to do that, we need to take the square root of each value. So taking the square root on the left here, we get 1,955. The upper bound here on the right side, taking the square of that gives us 4,055. So the interpretation would then say that we are 90% confident that the population standard deviation of the price of all six-year-old Chevy Corvettes is between $1,955 and $4,055. Now, if we wanted to go ahead and go the route by using the technology, using StatCrunch, we're going to enter the raw data in the first column if necessary, which is what we've done. Okay, so we've done that over here. Now we want to be able to select stat from the menu and then highlight variant stats and then highlight one sample. Choose with data or with summary. Well, we're put using raw data, so we're going to have to use with data. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to go ahead and then select stat and then we're going to go to variant stats and then we're going to go to one sample and then we got with data since that's what we're using. And then we're going to choose the column. Okay. And then down here, we have hypothesis test, which is not what we want. We want the confidence interval. So we're going to select the confidence interval. And then the question asked us for the 90% confidence interval. So we need to change this to 0 0.90. And then from here, we're going to select compute. And then when we select compute, we're going to see that this is the same matching data over here which is the 90% confidence interval results. So it gives us the same number of values. So here is the sample variance. Here's the degrees of freedom. Here is the lower limit. Here's the upper limit. So this is the confidence interval for the variance. And once we have those numbers, we can take the square root of those to then give us the standard deviation. So over here, StatCrunch gives us confidence intervals for the variance determine the square root of the lower limit and the upper limit to find the confidence interval for the standard deviation. And therefore, there would be our numbers, which would going to be the same that we got over here in step five.